In this video series, we'll explore USD in Maya and how it can make the lives of artists and animators a lot easier. One of the most powerful things you can do with USD is interact with massive data sets of geometry, like this one from Pixar, which is made of millions of models and textures. We'll take a look at creating sets in USD and Maya, beginning in this first video with the modeling department. As far as the work of modeling goes, that remains the same, using familiar programs like ZBrush, Maya. Once the models are done, we're ready to export them into USD, but there's a couple things that we'll want to do first in preparation. Let's take a look at that. So the first thing we want to do is something that I've gleaned from this uh, example scene from Animal Logic, the A-Lab. And what they do in their process is they set up display purposes for proxy geometry and renderable geometry. And we're going to get into that in the, the next section when we actually open up USD and start doing stuff with this. And this is sort of preparatory to that. And what it involves as far as the modeling stages is basically making two groups, one called geo and one called geo proxy, and putting the low res proxy geometry in the proxy group and putting the high res renderable geometry in the high res group. Now there's lots of ways to make this proxy geo. There's Decimation Master in ZBrush, which is fantastic. There's Mesh Reduce in Maya. Also, Mesh Display Soften Edge, as the name indicates, lets you display your low-res mesh with soft edges, as you can see in this example of a curtain. Now, something that's really important that I want to highlight is on the proxy geo groups here, you'll notice that I have appended all of these with the prefix of low. And down and below here, all of these have low on them, as opposed to the regular geometry, which just has the original name. And the way that I did that is pretty easy. You just select all the stuff and go modify prefix hierarchy names and type in low or whatever you want your prefix to be to indicate this is proxy geometry and click OK. And the reason this is important or really critical to do when you have these two sets of geometry, one to be rendered and one for a proxy display, is that USD requires that you have unique names. Otherwise, the material binding will fail, meaning you try to apply the materials to all this stuff for rendering, and it just all breaks. And so it's really critical in the modeling stage that you don't have naming clashes with your geometry. The other thing that's really nice to do for modeling is to set up preview shaders for the proxy geometry. This is for the animators to see in the Maya viewports. So they're not working with everything set to a depressing gray. And for this, we're going to be using USD Preview Surface, which, as you can see from the name, USD Preview Surface, was made exactly for this purpose. We can also attach uh, proxy textures if we have any. So here as a demo, I just put in the floor here. And these should be downsized to like 512 by 512 for interactivity in the viewport display. And with that, we're ready to export. Now, I want you to notice that I have each element at the top level of the outliner. It's critical that when we're exporting to USD, that the thing we're selecting to export is at the top of the hierarchy. Otherwise, you'll get the dreaded unresolved reference prim path warning, which means that your USD file is basically broken and nobody wants that. So with my top node selected, I just need to hit this little Maya shelf button. This is a Python script that I'll put a link to in the description below for that will do a number of things above and beyond what the regular Maya USD export does, taking advantage of some of the cool features of USD, namely proxy and render display purposes, payloading of heavy geometry files, and finally custom metadata with info on the originating Maya file. So let me just click on that and you know you may have a uh, different directory structure and naming convention but uh, the one that I'm using is I have this under production assets set and then the name of my set which is living room demo in this case and then um, the modeling folder 
the USD folder, and then within that I have the elements because that's what I'm exporting out here is these two elements. So I'm going to name this room underscore mod and hit save. And then do the same thing for the hall mod. And I want you to notice here what it's already written out for the room element. We've got this file here, which is in USDC format. That's uh, C stands for crate, and that's the name of the binary file, which is intended for heavy files like geometry. And so this file contains our geometry. And then below that, we have the asset file, USDA stands for ASCII, meaning that it's human readable. And this is going to contain in a payload our geometry file. Let's, let's actually take a look at that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save out the hall. And then let's open this up. So you can see right here that the geometry file is payloaded into the asset file here. Also notice down below here that this is where we have the proxy and render display purposes based on our group names. Now this is uh, somewhat crude in that it only works if you use exactly these group names which I'm using here. But I will also show you guys how to just sort of set that up manually in Maya so that you know how to do both ways. And then finally, we have in here the uh, metadata, which tells us the name of the Maya file that this USD was created from or exported from, which can be really useful for asset tracking. So now that we have our modeling elements written out, we want to assemble them onto a stage. So first thing I'm going to do is come up into here and say stage with new layer. So this basically just makes a brand new stage. You can see that I have in my USD layer editor down here, it says anonymous layer. And you can, I have this open already, but you can get to that if you just sort of right click on the stage here and say USD layer editor, then it'll pop up that window. And then in here, I need to save this. I'm gonna double click on it and that opens up the save dialog here. And you're gonna to wanna to save this out as an ASCII file. So what I like to do actually is go into options and say save and make sure that I have this on ASCII by default. And then we're gonna, what we wanna do is I'm here in the elements folder where I have all my elements and I'm gonna go up one folder and we're gonna save it there. I'm gonna save it as the name of the set asset. And then next we have, uh, I, I'm having, I'm writing an all caps model. And that's because we're gonna be using this as a layer and it's kind of a best practice to use the layers according to the domain or the pipeline stuff that they are. So in this case, this is the modeling pipeline stuff, hence the name. So I save that and then I'm gonna open up my stage here and I need to go into the shape node and then I can right click and add a prim. I'm gonna add an X form. X form is pretty much the same as a, a group in Maya. So it means that you can then group things together and then move them and rotate them and scale them and so on. A scope is just for organizational purposes. So you can't move a scope. So I'll make a uh, X form in here and then I'm gonna make a couple underneath it. I'm gonna name this top one root and I'm gonna go over here into the kind and I'm gonna say assembly cause that's what I'm doing. I'm assembling the elements. And then on these, I'm gonna name these after the names of the elements that I'm about to read in here. So we've got 
hall and room. And then I'm going to right click on this and say add USD reference. Go into my elements folder and I want to load in the asset file. So this would be hall mod dot USDA. and room underscore mod. And then notice it's saving it to this living room underscore model USDA file. Now, as I was mentioning before, these are payloaded. So if I come into the hall, for example, or here, let me do it on the room since it's easier to see. I can come in here and right click and unload. And that will unload the payload. And then I can, of course, come back in and load it back in. And in a set like this, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense why you'd want to do that. So let's talk about this in the context of the Disney Moana scene. This here, this is the Disney Moana USD set, and it is massive. As you can see here, you've got like this entire island down to the leaves and the petals. Like, you know, this is the, the close-up detail that you have, and that is everywhere. And if you tried to load that all into your Maya scene all at once, it would completely crash Maya. And so that's where we have, in addition to this concept of having proxy display geometry and renderable geometry that's higher res, we have the concept from USD of a payload. And a payload is, it's, it's basically a reference that you can load and unload at will. And so a animator could be working on a scene like this and say, okay, you know what, I'm only doing the beach and so I don't really need to have some of these things loaded into my scene, so I'll just go and I'll unload them. Let's jump in and take a look at that. First of all, I'm going to uncheck load payloads when opening the file. And then I've gone through and selectively loaded the payloads for just the elements I want to see for the shot. Notice the foliage scattered across the hilltops. That's done with the USD point instancer. As a quick demo, let's make our own point instance using MASH. First step is to duplicate the USD hill model into Maya data. Then we can scatter some foliage over it. I'll make two MASH networks, one with my renderable mesh and a duplicate with a low res proxy mesh. I'll put each of these into their geo and geo proxy group. And next I export with the USD Geo Shelf button, then create an export and prim, and reference it in. Because of my settings, I need to initially load the payload in, and I can of course unload it too if I want. Take a look at the structure of the point instancer and that it has a single point. Regular instancing works with shared geometry with individual transforms. Point instancing also has shared geo, but puts all of the scattered geo onto a single point. The advantage is that it's extremely performant and you can get millions and even billions of point instances. Now it's worth noting that while USD point instancing is able to display insane poly counts, MASH is not. So while MASH is fine for doing little things like I'm doing here, 50,000 instances, at some point you're going to want to jump into using something like Bifrost or Houdini. All right, that's it for payloads. Let's next take a look at the render and proxy display purposes. We have here these two folders, the proxy and the geo with our high res geo in here. And if we look here under the imageable, which is a weird word, we see that here under purpose, it's set to proxy. And if we go to this one, we see that the purpose is set to render. And that's precisely what the shelf button does. But you could, of course, set this up manually yourself if you were so inclined within Maya. And then the way that that functions is up here in the shape for the stage, 
you see that under stage display, it's set to proxy. And so what that means is it will show you whatever is tagged as proxy and not show what is tagged as render. However, it will then conversely render whatever is tagged as render and not render whatever is tagged as proxy. And that's why we can have these duplicates. And this, this concept, as I mentioned before, I gleaned from Animal Logic's ALAB. This is what they demo in, in that project. You should totally check it out. It's awesome, really helpful project to learn from. And if you tried to display their high res render for that scene, it would absolutely crash my in a heartbeat. But you can easily load in the entire ALAB scene the way that they have it set up because it's loading in this low resolution proxy geometry and displaying that. So this whole idea of uh, display purposes within USD is again a really powerful workflow. All right, to wrap this up, I'm gonna make a new scene and create a new stage. And this is gonna be our main set. So I'm gonna come up a level above modeling and save it here. I wanna name it set underscore living room dot USDA and then I'm gonna right click on here and say load sublayers go into our modeling directory into the USD folder and then load in the living room underscore model dot USDA file that is the file from modeling and I'll read it into here and and I need to save this here. And it's gonna save this file that I just created, but save the connection of the sublayer from the modeling domain or modeling pipeline stuff being added into here. Let's review our three-step process. In step one, we wrote out the elements of our set into the elements folder. These were geometry files that were payloaded into their corresponding asset files. In step two, we assembled these elements into the set, referencing them into the living room model.usda file. In step three, the modeling department's contribution was added as a sublayer to the main set file. Following that, other departments, like LookDev, will add their contributions over that. We'll take a look at that process in the next video, but the basic idea is that each department can layer in their contribution in a non-destructive way, which is another important principle of USD.